We tend to romanticize Peter. We tend to elevate him to legendary status because, after all, he ends up in Rome and essentially is the first bishop of Rome, the first pope. But if you look at the four canonical Gospels, you see how much work Jesus had to do to get Peter ready for that job. I often consider Peter the comic relief character of the New Testament. Someone who typically reacts without thinking things through. Demonstrates to me this is probably an historical characteristic of his personality. After all, shortly after Jesus meets Peter, one of the first things he says to him is, I'm going to call you Cephas, which is Peter, which means the rock. We typically interpret that passage as Peter is the rock. He is the foundation upon which Jesus is going to build his church. I got another interpretation for you. Peter is the rock. Jesus took one look at Peter and realized, man, you are a stubborn person. And I'm going to break that wall down. I'm going to enjoy cracking those rocks open in order for me to get in. You can't be a spiritual person if you're stubborn. Peter needed, as a disciple, develop a willingness to be led and learning to obey. And if you got that concrete barrier up, Jesus has to tear it down. And he takes every opportunity to do so. Every time Peter does something impulsive, something silly, Jesus puts him back in his place. For example, Jesus went on with his disciples to the village. And on the way, he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. Well, he asked them, who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, you are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. We'll talk about why Jesus didn't want that secret out on a future episode. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Where is the comic relief in that story? In the first passage, Jesus is asking his disciples, who do people say that I am? And you got a lot of crazy ideas out there. Then Peter tells Jesus, you are the Messiah. And this is assumed that Peter believed Jesus was the Messiah. Jesus was the Son of Man. Jesus was the Savior. Jesus is the ultimate teacher. Very next passage. Jesus starts teaching about what it means to be a Messiah. Jesus starts teaching about the Son of Man and that he'll undergo suffering and that he'll be persecuted and be put to death. Peter takes Jesus aside and says, no, you're wrong. Who does Peter think he is? Peter is telling the Messiah that the Messiah is wrong about what it means to be a Messiah? Jesus' response is, get behind me, Satan. Which, in my opinion, is probably the equivalent of, shut up, Peter. Or how about the time when Peter decides to take it upon himself to walk on water out to Jesus? He sees Jesus floating on water, and here's Peter all of a sudden going, Hey, look, Jesus, I have faith. I'll walk on water, too. I'm going to come out to you. You stay there, all right? You stay there. I'm going to walk out to you. And imagine what was going through Jesus' mind. Jesus is probably thinking, Okay, Peter, come out to me, and thinking, Oh, this is going to be a disaster. All right, Peter, come on out. Oh, Peter, no, no, Peter. What happened, Peter? Why are you sinking? Where is your faith? You're totally all wet. But, but I saw you. You were out there, but you fell. Oh, Peter, come on. Jesus goes over to Peter, and he's like, where was your faith? But I love the fact that Jesus let Peter come on out and sink. A lot of times we have to fall to learn. You don't learn how to walk without falling a few times. To put Peter in his place. Go, Peter, would you stop being so impulsive? Where is your faith? Why are you being this way, man? Now you're all wet. At the Last Supper, Je at the Last Supper, Peter asked Jesus, which one of these apostles is the greatest? It's me, right? It's me, right? And Jesus is like, you know, uh, the first will be last, the last will be first. And by the way, Peter, um, before the night is over, you're going to deny me. You're going to deny me not once, not twice, but three times. And, and Peter's like, no, 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 Jesus. I will never deny you. Here's Peter again telling Jesus how it is. Jesus goes, that's all nice, but you're going to deny me. And Peter's like, no matter what, no matter what, 
I will never deny you. I love how Luke portrays the story. When Peter denies Jesus three times, to a slave girl no less, Jesus turns and looks at Peter. Okay? So here's Peter realizing that he denied Jesus. Jesus said, this is what you're going to do. Peter's like, oh no, I would never do that. Like a rock. And Jesus turns and looks at Peter and is like, mm-hmm, I saw what you did. And I think that story was the wake-up call to Peter. I mean, there's plenty of stories with Peter being foolish. The Gospel of John says it best. The post-resurrected Jesus is on the beach uh, talking to Peter, and he asks him three times, Peter, do you love me? Now go. Now go and take care of my sheep and start my church. And he says it three times. And this is the three times Jesus is restoring Peter for the threefold denial. I think Peter got it after the threefold denial. The third time he denied Jesus was that moment where that rock came tumbling down. He'll tear you down in order to raise you back up. Some of the greatest saints in our history have what is referred to as the Dark Knight. I'm Batman. With an N of the soul. The Dark Knight of the soul is when you have this, this long period of absence. This long period of, of feeling that God is not in communion with you. That God perhaps does not exist or God is not there for you. Jesus does those periods of absence so that we can prevail, to make us stronger. And he let Peter fall in order to raise him back up.